Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. There are people who are so rabidly homophobic, and I just find that fascinating. It's as if you met someone who was absolutely spent all their life trying to get rid of red telephones. You go, what? It, it, you know, you just you would not understand it. Why would someone bother to attack a group of people who mean and do them no harm? This is a series about gay people and the trouble people have accepting them. I'm good, no. How do you do? Over the last two years, when time allowed, I travelled to meet some of the most notorious homophobes on the planet. Signor Deputado, Stephen Fry. To challenge their prejudice and to find out where their hatred comes from. Gay people, um, most of them, are lying about their problems. You're really not making any sense, Deputy. You really aren't. Homosexuality is fantastic. You should try it. I will arrest you. I will arrest you. But when your penis is terrorizing someone... My penis isn't. My penis doesn't do that. I also had a chance to meet some of the people who are victims of this prejudice, as well as those fighting against it. I never feel to sleep with a woman. It's a yak. <laughs> I'm born a queen. So I can look imagine that the not vir do meu filho para casa que ele estivesse morto. Of course, this matters to me because I'm gay. But homophobia impacts on all of us. It diminishes our humanity, and you can find it all around the world. In legal terms, I think we have, but it's it's not a question just of laws. It's a question of of the outlook of the broader society. Part of me wishes to bury myself under a blanket and let someone else do um, any uh, cheerleading for good causes. You know, it's nice to think one can just let the world get on with it, and uh, it's certainly not my job to to push things down people's throat, which is always the good gay joke people make. One can't stand by and see injustice, you know. If there's another horrible case of a child having to hang themselves because they're being tormented, then you, you have to speak out and hope things get better. Because there are certain things you can't control, but there are other things where, you know, just quietly pushing, pushing on the door, you can make a difference, or pecking on the wood, you can eventually drill a hole. It's incredible how much has changed for gay people in Britain in my lifetime. It's only been legal for me to be gay since 1967. Those homophobes are wrong. You can have Adam and Steve. Hello. <laughs> it's Andy and Andy, Steve. Yeah. You're Andy. But even though gays are no longer criminals and we have more rights than ever before, there are still some of you out there who will think that what you're about to see is wrong. You nervous? Yeah. Very, <laughs> really. Yeah. Some people would say, well, you know, the point about gay people is they're bohemian, they're outside the you know, the normal world of uh, families and all that sort of thing. So why, why would you feel the need to seal your relationship in a, in, a, in a civil bond like this? It's just a natural thing for us to do, isn't it? It's the way we've been brought up. I feel what we have is what I've been shown what love is and what a marriage is from my parents. They treated each other with respect. They were partners, and that's what we are. We just happen to be two men. All straightforward? Yeah. Good. Excellent. Deep breath. Lower the shoulders, smile, and enjoy. While England and Wales were slightly ahead of the game, being gay was a crime in Scotland until 1980, 1982 in Northern Ireland. The World Health Organization regarded being gay as a mental illness till 1992. Everybody believes they live in a lifetime of extraordinary change, um, but I feel I've got more reason to think it than most. 
The idea of the seedy, dirty, filthy queer was firmly entrenched in one's mind as one grew up. <clears throat> and as soon as I realized that that's what I was, which is very early, I think, it, it was naturally a sense of foreboding with which I um, anticipated adulthood. Is there anyone present who knows of any lawful reason why Andrew and Stephen may not form their civil partnership this afternoon? Splendid! <laughs> <laughs> to go from that situation to, to this amazing day like today where you, you see a gay couple getting a civil partnership with the full blessing of the law and the charm and warmth of the registrars and the easygoing nature of the entire, the entire event. And that's a very profound thing, I think. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. And a sign of the promises. And a sign of the promises. I make to you today. I make to you today. Oh. Yeah, I can't help it. I, when you see this sort of ceremony, you see the hundreds of years of um, prejudice and hatred that, that went before. And it's just a crime with happiness, really. <laughs> Yes, I always cry at weddings anyway, and you just realise how far we've travelled, and it's, it's incredibly touching. It makes one very proud to live in a time when this is finally possible. It seems to be that the world is going in two directions at once. The enemies of enlightened thinking, open thinking, free thinking, free action, free thought, are many. And gay people, um, you know, well, we should certainly celebrate days like today, but we should, we should be aware, we should be cautious, we should... Um, always be on our guard you know that somebody out there hates us <laughs> the fear that people hate us makes coming out difficult for me as a teenager in the 1970s it was a terrifying prospect because there was still so much shame attached to being gay but then, in 76, something inspiring happened. One of the most famous and successful pop stars on the planet risked it all by going public and saying, there's nothing wrong with going to bed with someone of your own sex. It was a game-changing moment for me and countless other gay teens who had locked ourselves away in the closet. Hello. 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 Mm, Fabian. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. Nice to Wonderful see you. See you. Thank, you. thank you. Come on, you. How early on did you realise you were not as other girls, as I like to put it? Um, it took quite a while. I mean, I, I grew up in the 50s when nobody talked about sex. Yeah. And the first time I had sex was when I was 23. Really? With anybody. Yeah. And it was a man. The thing was, I thought everybody in the industry knew. And you know, when it came out and it was the cover issue of Rolling Stone, it really didn't hurt my career that much at all. No. It, people burnt my records. Um, but I think you still but it wasn't, records. But it wasn't really... There was no seismic no. shift. And so you were mutually drawn as well. Did you have a boyfriend at the time? Had you had a boyfriend? No, I, it's, Elton is my first real relationship. The first six months, we took it very slowly and very carefully. Yeah. I mean, I had to come out to my family, because I wasn't out to my family. I had to go home oh, at really? Christmas and say, I'm gay and I'm in a relationship with Elton John, <laughs> which, is, which is coming out like an exoset missile. That was the first cheap one of the second The relationship was, was, was yeah. blossoming yeah. Um, until the point um, that civil marriages became, or civil yeah. partnerships, yeah. I should say, became possible, and you were the first notable couple. We did it on the first day that we did could, it, yeah. on the 21st of December. We did it really to make a political statement, but the actual servers and the actual occasion was so moving yeah. that it really changed our relationship. And we did it for symbolic reasons and then had this tremendous sense of contentment afterwards. And now that we've taken on the responsibility of raising a child together, yeah. um, I feel, I couldn't feel any closer to Elton than I feel right now. There are those in the public eye who have, um, who have said that, you know, a true family should be a man and a woman and a child as in the usual conventional well, way. That I don't agree with at all. No, no. no. You can't get everyone in your side, and we don't need, you know, we just want to be good parents and prove people wrong. Um, yes. and, well, and I think we will, but, I mean, you've just, you can't stop that kind of stuff. That's right. It's, it's all about equality. Yeah. I think everybody in 
life deserves to be treated equally, regardless of who they are, what they are, who they love, yeah. where they come from, yeah. age, color, yeah. sexuality, sex. Yeah. And indeed, I would say with absolute assurance that there are, in Britain uh, uh, alone, many, many, many gay couples and gay individuals who feel probably validated by your status for all kinds of reasons, the, the dignity, the obvious authenticity, and the fact that you speak out, both of you, uh, has done a lot for individuals. While Elton and David have done much to encourage a change in attitudes towards gay people here, I'm keen to know more about what it means to be gay elsewhere in the world. Today, 40 years on from the very first Gay Pride March in Britain, London is hosting World Pride. And the gay community here has joined forces with gay men and women from all around the planet to show that the fight for gay equality is now a global one. We are on the corner of Baker Street and Oxford Street, taken over by uh, a group of people who, whose rights have advanced enormously over the past 40 years since this began. But um, we must never forget, uh, rights can be taken away as easily as they can be given. And, and uh, there are people out there who are filled with hate for, for who we are. And uh, we have to be out there and show them that uh, we're proud of who we are, and that's why it's called Pride. You look superb. Thank you very much. You must, you must envy my body enormously. I do, in fact. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I always want to touch you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a great Pleasure. day. Thank you, too. So, yeah. have you come all the way from Sri Lanka to be here? That's right. Yeah. From a country that criminalizes us for being gay, with 12 years in jail. Uh, 12 know. years in jail. And we are living with the remnants of uh, British laws that have not been taken away from us. It, laws criminalizing homosexuality never existed no, around the world they came until from the, the British imposed it on them. Yes. Yes. Right? Please Sorry. take back what you gave us. We don't want it anymore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want it anymore. Of the 84 countries that still criminalize homosexuality, roughly half are ex-British colonies using old British laws, though none of these are among the five that currently put gay people to death. This is um, Iran, and there's some boys being hanged by the neck till dead in the usual way. It's a sort of mass hanging, uh, again, for the crime of apparently having slept with each other. It's just the supreme expression of homophobia. If anti-Semitism can lead to Auschwitz, homophobia leads to this. The sheer... Oh, Although it sounds like political correctness, moaning about playground taunting and saying that it's important that we um, show respect, this is why. Because... Because if you let if you let words and insults go by unchallenged, if you don't allow the dignity of gay people, um, then slowly those will be given freer and freer reign to do what they wish. I don't know what I can do. I I, I can't go to Iran. Um, the BBC have advised it would not be safe or sensible for me to do so. We wanted to film in Turkey, actually, where we heard of a, a couple of, um, uh, of Iranians who had uh, taken refuge there. But even uh, Turkey, which is um, more or less a democracy, uh, denied us the right to film. And they said, why would you want to film about homosexuality? What a peculiar subject. Um, so uh, instead, I'm going to um, talk to someone who comes from Iran and is here um, seeking asylum. Um, terrified of going back home, where he may well be killed. Three such hangings are reported to have taken place in the last year. But it's almost impossible to find anyone brave enough to talk about being gay in Iran. Farshad 
has agreed to meet me to tell his story of how loving someone could have cost him his life. I had a boyfriend, uh, but his father was a very, very, very horrible man. And uh, we had a relationship for four years. And his father claimed to court that uh, me, I raped to his son. Uh, my boyfriend, if, if he, he said it's, it wasn't rape, he will be guilty. I see, because then he would yeah. admit that he had been... Yeah. He, yeah. And uh, so he said, yes, it was rape. So that's when you escaped. Yeah. And you miss him still? A lot. He's fine at the moment. He has to stay in home all the time. And his father locked the door. And he can't leave the home. And, and he's tried his to... father say he has to marry with some girl. But, but there's no chance of him escaping Iran, no, coming no. to join you anyway. Oh, that's terrible. And you've been here for three years now. Yeah. And, um, has the Home Office granted you asylum as a refugee? When, when the, my caseworker asked me uh, about my case, they don't believe me that I'm gay. And they, they told me, if, if you are gay, you need good, good evidence that you are gay. That's a bizarre state of affairs, because they must recognize sure. that if you went back to Iran, your life would be in danger, or yeah. your, certainly your liberty. If they want to uh, turn back to Iran, yeah. uh, there is no any way. Just uh, I'm thinking about suicide, and I will kill oh, myself Jesus. because it's 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 uh, it's better than hang up. Yes. Even I hanged. choose this way. Quite. Even it's I your choose. Choice. Yeah. It's, it's, your it's choice. my choice. If the British government sent you back to Iran and, and the worst happened and you were hanged, it would be a crime that would be on the on the head of everyone in my country, yeah. and it would shame me. You can be aware of the wider politics, the theology. It's only when you meet someone who is a who is a victim of those of those extraordinarily skewed moralities and the cruelty and barbarity of the of the system that's in place in Iran that that it um, touches you truly deeply. I think Fashad is an extremely brave man to talk to me on camera about his experience. It's the most, it's the most idiotic, the most ironic, the most stupid human quality you can have, that love is the thing that tears people from their homeland, from their families, threatens their lives, uh, makes them outcasts from their own people. Love, the greatest force we have, the thing that will mend us all in the end. Um, it's just, it's criminal. It's, it's, it's very, very upsetting indeed. For me, it's not enough that my country might offer sanctuary to gay people persecuted by their own governments. I'd like to talk to some of these tyrants to hear how they try to justify themselves and their prejudices. I'm starting in Uganda, a country that seems to be going backwards in its treatment of gay people. Since 2009, its government has been considering passing a new law which proposes a death penalty for homosexuals. It's ignited a wave of anti-gay feeling and made homosexuality a hot topic here. I've been invited by Kampala's most popular radio breakfast show host to debate the issue. Stephen Fry here to see uh, Fat Boy. Fat boy? Fat boy. Fat boy. Fat boy. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet Hello. you. Hi, good morning, Shanice. Uh, nice Denise, to meet you. lovely to meet you. This yeah. right. Yes. How are you? And I can't deny I'm feeling a bit nervous about meeting my opponent in the debate, who would probably prefer if me and my kind were behind bars. Welcome to Sanyu Breakfast, uh, Stephen Fry. Thank you, Fatboy. It's lovely to be here. Yeah. Also joining us, uh, we're joined by uh, Pastor Solomon Malay of Arising for Christ Ministries. He almost needs no introduction. You know him. He's out there very aggressively fighting against uh, the many evils that plague our society. Is that correct? True. <laughs> In a climate where the size of a church congregation equates to its wealth and power, 
taking a harsh and even graphic view on homosexuality is a surefire way to appear relevant. Let me start by being very, very clear. Each and every people deserve to be permitted to pursue their destiny. Unfortunately, when we got independence, we somehow along the way lost our values. But if someone is truly traditional, like for instance, a man marrying a woman, and a woman getting married to a man, and sexual intercourse, the, the values to, of good character, where you are honest, where you can be trusted. Don't, let's not pretend those values came from missionaries in wearing black coats who arrived all the way from Britain and from France and from America, and they brought you a Bible. Even before they it was came, nothing we had to do with your culture. As, Uganda, as all peoples do, they, we all have those values, and mm -hmm. gay people have them too. I've come out to tell my brothers, my sisters, my children, what you are indulging in is hurting your life. I've counseled victims who have urinary tract infections, those who have had their penises operated. I've had those who have been condemned. Their bowels are condemned, like this young man here. He has been condemned. I've never heard of any of these preposterous so physical again, prolapses again, you've again, spoken again. about. They just don't exist. Again, that is the funniest headline I have ever seen. Right, Jen, I, I will have to read it out. How, how uh, bum Stephen, shafting shattered my whopper. <laughs> <laughs> Where would a man like this one get... Uh, get, get um, no uh, need to go into detail. Get, get a, a spare penis. Get a, a okay. spare rectum and uh, anus. When we get yeah. back, we'll be taking we your love phone them calls. More than we love more We have to take a break. When we get back, we'll be taking phone calls. Hmm. Stay tuned. So let's not discuss anatomy. Sorry, okay. But, but for me, that's why I came out. So we compromised yeah, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, they don't have their license closed down. Well, we're having a good time. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Fatbo here with Sean. Hoping you're enjoying uh, the conversation we're having this morning. Well, so how did you think that went? To me, it was fine. Yeah. Nothing bad is talked about homosexuality. Very little. But the bulk of it, it talks well, about I'm... erotic experience when you indulge in anal sex. But when you start talking to them, you hear very, very sad, painful stories. Mm. Young girls who have had uh, what I call urinary incontinence. Yes. The bladders have been damaged yeah. because they use all sorts of gadgets, including dildos, including carrots. And look at the, 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 the penis penetrating the, mm. the anus, where it was never meant to penetrate. But why, to... why are you concentrating on homosexuals there? Because most sodomy, most anal intercourse takes place between men and women. It doesn't matter. So Homosexuality just... is not a person. It is the act. There's nothing like someone was born a gay, someone was born a lesbian. But I you, was born You different. were born with a penis. Yes. And a woman is born with a vagina. Yes. The penis is supposed to penetrate the vagina, not the anus. So you say? It's simply perversion I, and I don't foolishness. Know why you're obsessed with anuses? I'm not no, interested no, 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 in no, anuses. No, 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 I am telling you, fry. Eh? But you're obsessed with you anuses. See, when I'm you not interested in anuses. I'm interested in men I fall in love with. When and you not say, with anuses. Can't you understand? No, 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 it's about no, no, love. No, 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 no. You are it's so base and materialistic. Love. But when it your penis is paralyzing someone... My penis isn't. My penis doesn't do that. I'm not interested in sodomy and buggery. I am not interested. No, no, no. So forget about it. Right. You're just so right. perverted. Right. All you care about is penises and vaginas Ca and anuses. Can you listen it's to so me? You're so sick. Can you listen to I me? I have been, and it's been you a say you real were born lesson. Again. Yeah. You say you were born. Yeah. Where are you able to recognize that on the day you were born? Of course I didn't. That's a joke. Now, why are you lying that you were born gay? I wasn't. Oh. When did you first have uh, homosexuality intercourse? I've never had it. You, in your life? Never. You Most never. gays don't. You're obsessed with it. That's why I keep telling you. All you can think of is anal sex. So you've I'm never, not interested wait, in wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. You've never had a partner? Yes. But we, we use fellatio and mutual masturbation and intercrural sex, such as the Greeks did, but not penetrating the arsehole. No, 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 but... You're the one who's obsessed with penetrating wait, no, the no, arsehole. No, 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 no. Your obsession with sodomy, it says something very peculiar about you, if I may say so. It's quite extraordinary. No, but... Uh, the most peculiar thing. 
You are not using your penis the way you should have used it. Oh, it's not up to you to tell me how to use and my sad. penis. My penis was there to give me pleasure. And Under the mate. cloak of caring, you have designated homosexuality to be a vicious, perverted disease that causes all kinds of bizarre anal and, and, and vaginal and, and penile... No, no, no. You know, you homosexuality have homosexuality is not a disease. Well, it's no. not a disease. Well, you... It's an addiction. <laughs> <And> There's <laughs> a difference <laughs> between a disease, okay. you learn it, and then you get addicted to it. I know what these people do. These people? These I know what these people do. They, they are the homosexuals, what they do. Oh, you are they... so... Marley's attitude towards gay people makes the prospect of a law that would execute us chillingly real. But it's reassuring to find that some Ugandans have a different take on the issue. You are very hostile, Pastor. No, 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 no. no, no. Whew. Well, fat boy. I don't know how wow. you that went. <laughs> how did that go? Um, <laughs> interesting, I think is the word. Um, you must, I'm assuming, know some gay people. I know many. Yeah. My own position, now, Steve, is actually that I want the bill to pass. It's because it's so ridiculous, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, and and uh, it's going to achieve the opposite effect. You see, the, if it ever were to pass, it would simply be unenforceable. If it were ever brought before the courts, chances are it would be challenged and the law would be at high risk of being repealed even. Yes. Uh, and so I actually wanted to pass for That's that reason. That's a very good thing. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And they'll have to contend with the fact that, okay, no matter what legal measures we take, it looks like these people will always be here. Yeah. And most people are just going to be like, okay, you know what, let's just move on. There's other things to think about yeah. in life. Well, it's wonderful to talk to you and uh, get us some clear light on this. What you've told me is taken the slightly sour taste out of my mouth. <laughs> dear, <laughs> dear Pastor Marley. It would be easy to write off Marley as some sort of fanatic. But preaching that homosexuality is a curable dysfunction has dangerous consequences. I'm on my way to meet Stosh Mugisha, a lesbian who was raped when she was just 14 by a farmhand who believed that this would cure her. It's a phenomenon known as corrective rape, and it's affecting lesbians all across Africa. Stosh is one of the few brave enough to share her story. There was a, a man who used to work at home driving tractors. He would find me touching girls, uh, pussies and all that. He said, I want to show you how to, to, to play with the boys. And then this guy grabs me, I was putting on shorts and he tore it and he penetrated me with his penis. And it didn't take long. This guy just got out of me and I was bleeding. I just cried and this, this guy kept telling me, ah, ah, that's how you have to play with boys and all that. I was sad and I don't know what happened later, but I found myself sleeping and crying in my sleep. When my grandmom came around, I told her, Saddam forced me, he was called Saddam, forced me to, forced his mm. penis in, into me. He's like, but you always play with them football. Man, you chose to. And they left it just like that. And it even got worse later when they discovered I was pregnant. So this yeah. one single rape yes. made you pregnant? Yes. I didn't even know the word rape by yes. then. Really? They took me to the hospital. They injected me. So they forced an abortion? Yes. Mm -hmm. 1996. I went for a checkup and I found I was positive with mm. HIV and AIDS. And this and was the only sexual act that could have possibly, yes. the only thing that could have given it to you was that this single exact, brief yes. hideous rape yeah. when you were a young girl of 14. Yeah. You know, the, I had nothing, I had no say. I couldn't say anything, I couldn't. But it kept hurting, you know, like hurting me, you know, like these people really think that I could just lie there. I had never met a man. I'd never slept with a man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, please don't be sorry. 
I'm telling you the truth. I tried so hard to commit suicide. I'm not surprised. Because I, there are very, very many things I weren't aware of. Yeah. But I knew that someone can kill themselves. Your life encapsulates almost every detail of the gay experience in Uganda. But you are a shining example and, a, and an amazing inspiration. And I hope anybody watching this will be as, as taken with you and as fond of you as I've become very quickly. How traumatized would a child be to be, to be raped in order to cure them of their inner feelings, which is just insane, it makes no sense whatsoever. And in that act, impregnates her with a child and with HIV. It's almost beyond the realms of the gloomiest fiction you could imagine. And to meet someone who can live through it is really extraordinary. This is where the grotesque figures like Pastor Marle stop being funny because it's their rhetoric that builds up to this kind of thing. It really is. Right now, HIV rates are soaring all across Uganda, but the mind-boggling thing about the proposed anti-homosexuality bill is that gay people are now afraid to ask for treatment. A gay support group called Icebreakers has had to step into the breach and open a clinic. But in doing so, it's attracted the wrath of a senior government minister who is behaving as if the bill is already law. The Minister for Ethics and Integrity, that's Ethics and Integrity, Simon Lakurdo, has said he intends investigating the clinic for promoting homosexuality. If we find out that it's the clinic relating to promoting the culture which doesn't conform to our morals as a country, we shall instantly ban and close it, he told IRN Plus News. These people, LGBTI, are doing their operations undercover. It's not easy to track them. However, we shall not allow any social gathering, association, infrastructure, or any activities that exist to promote homosexuality, he said. It seems such a pity. Lukodo's agreed to meet me before I leave Uganda, and I'll be keen to challenge him about his behavior, including his threat to jail people who don't report gays to the authorities. In this sort of climate, it's little wonder that Icebreaker's whereabouts is a closely guarded secret. There they are. Do you see them with the, the right suits? Yeah. Here? Turn right in here? Turn right here. That's it. Security clearly matters. Hey. Nice to Hello, how are you? Oh, nice okay. to see you. Nice to see you. So this is your clinic? This yeah. is this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this, this icebreaker. Breaker. This icebreaker. This is the research center. It has a clinic and everything all in one gate. And, and I noticed you've got this gate and, and it's, it's secret, basically. You try not to let the government know about it. No, there's no post. Just everyone thinks it's a home. So you rely on a network of LGBTI people to inform each other that there is this place if they want rapid testing or they want advice on sexual health and things like that. Yes, that's what you do. It's, it's a network. It's kind of underground, but yeah. everyone knows exactly where to find us. The bill, as it stands, you have 24 hours to report somebody being gay, and if you don't, you can have a huge fine or imprisonment. If this got passed in, into law, you would apparently be breaking the law. It has become a challenge to us because if they say that it's a law for me to go and report that this one is a homosexual, yeah. then that means they have to change the, our laws. As, because, a, as a medical practitioner, exactly, you've taken Because we have oath. to keep confidentiality of each and every one. I, I was reading a quotation from the Kodo, the Minister of um, integrity and ethics, in big inverted commas, yeah. and he said that uh, he had heard of you and that uh, his, he thought that you were there to promote homosexuality and his intention was to close you down. Yeah, we, we don't think they really come out because there's nothing illegal we are doing, no. but maybe just to prove a point of defiance, they can come and raid us, and we can't resist them because they're more powerful than us, but soon they'll get tired of clapping down on us. We aren't going to stop. It's fantastically we're brave. Yeah, we're just beginning, we won't stop. While the health aspect of Icebreaker's work has become increasingly crucial, its other function as a safe space for young gay people is now more important than ever. You feel accepted. It's safe. You can be yourself. You can talk about your relationship, how you feel, how, and talk about the way we dress. Yes, yes. You know, besides what we do with our community of 
telling them about HIV and all that, we, we really still come here because we feel safe, we feel accepted here in yeah. this environment. What's so revealing is that the, the insane uh, homophobic people who drafted this bill are convinced that everywhere is a conspiracy of you know, erotic orgy. And in fact, what you do is talk about friendship and feelings and love and fashion and gossip. You know, it's not about sex. I don't know why they're so obsessed with it. They are not ignorant and they know perfectly well that gay people pose no threat to the children and families of Uganda. Yeah. They know perfectly well that gay people don't recruit. So they are deliberately telling lies to make themselves popular and to make their voices loud. Exactly. It keeps them going. Yeah. It keeps their business shining. Shameful. Very Truly shameful. shameful. I have to admit I'm slightly dreading my meeting with Simon Lakodo, the former Catholic priest who is now Uganda's Minister for Ethics and Integrity and hell-bent on crushing his country's gay community. Who knows where it'll go. I shall try and be um, civil. I'd like to find out how he could possibly support this barbaric bill but I'm not sure he'll take to explaining himself to a gay Western liberal like me. How do you do? I'm good, do. How do you do? Thank you. My name is Stephen. Hello, Stephen. I've come with the BBC. I want to tell you, I want to tell you, point blank, mm. that there's no way you can impose your attitude to me. I'm not one. Well, I don't want to. I'm asking questions. I am, I am a typical Ugandan, and my role and mandate here is to empower your Ugandans to uphold moral values and principles. And we don't discriminate. However, we say, please, please, it's already bad that you are in that status. Don't promote, don't no. recruit, don't encourage others to come into your yes. very no, this unfortunate is very, status. This is what's unique in Uganda, this extraordinary idea of yours uh, of, of promotion. I, I was All my life I was subjected to, do, to indoctrination of how to be heterosexual. It never worked on me. It never, if you're born that what way, what I'm telling you born is, gay, why don't you... Or you're born straight. No, well, just let people be. That's finish. Then you are taking me for one who, that, who, who should come to join you. And they are no, tolerated. No, I don't want you to join me. I have no wish for you In to this me. country, no anybody wish. who I manifests himself a gay must be I don't, checked. I don't want one more homosexual in the world. I just want each one to be treated with love and dignity. Not with hatred, not with raids, I accusing them of, of, of recruiting them. And, and accusing them of, 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 of recruiting children. <laughs> what are the, 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 the values that we get from homosexuality? What value do you get? And like from Christianity, love. 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 Yes. Love when you destroy your back of your brother. Destroy the what? The back of your brother. The back. I have got yes, I've got my dear brothers who have come here because their backs are oozing with the pass. <laughs> <laughs> Most sodomy takes place in a heterosexual uh, uh, life. It is just a that is in Europe. That is in Europe there. No, that is in your place. No, all around in the world. Africa, never. In Africa, one <laughs> There's no would not rape mistake. in Africa, is there? There are no young girls being raped in Africa. They are. Oh, but there are thousands but, but, of them. But, so surely heterosexuality but, is far more dangerous to children than homosexuality. Far more. It's a country where heterosexual rape is almost endemic. I say, let them do it, but do oh, the let right them way. do it. The right way. Oh, let them do it the not, right way. Not, well, not, let not, them not. rape children the right way. What are you talking about? No, I'm, I'm about, saying I'm at least it is it is natural way of oh, desiring sex. Oh, that's okay then. So it's okay to. But, no. but, but for two men who wish, who consent to have sex together in private, is bad. But it's okay for a man to rape a woman because at least it's the right you way. You are giving two comparisons which you don't saying? meet. Which those comparisons don't compare at all. Well, that's what you've said to me. You said well, let them do it the right way. Take it the way you want. But what I'm telling you is. It is not permissible in Uganda for single-sex relationship. Finished. Right. And if you are advocating that, I'm sorry, I will treat you as a, a destructor of Uganda's ideology. Homosexuality is fantastic. You should no, try it. It's, it's really good fun. I will arrest you. I, would, no, I, I will not arrest you. Having sex I have a lawyer. I wouldn't want someone who wasn't gay not to have it. Them. But if you are gay, it's wonderful. Thank you. Um, I, hope, um, I, I hope everything goes... Goes well for Uganda. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. But surely, guys, will you stay away from us? Well, that was lively. 
he regards my view as an imposition on his country, and in a sense, he's absolutely right if he wants to look at it like that. But not, um, taking a, a more international, cosmopolitan approach in terms of international human rights, um, I think I'm right. He did buy me up, of course he did, because he's an idiot. You know, this idea that we recruit and promote it is, is, is the only one they can use to convince the ignorant that somehow homosexuals are a threat because there's no other way they are. Um, it's just, it's just so dishonest, so wrong. I'm none the wiser as to what's really behind Lakodo's hatred of gay people. He just kept repeating his mantra about promotion and recruitment as if being gay is something you can talk people into or out of. Perversely, the philosophy that underpins this twisted idea comes from the land that gave birth to gay liberation. And that's where I'm heading now. America is the home of reparative therapy, a therapy that claims it can change people from gay to straight through a series of sessions costing $140 a pop. Its most prominent practitioner, Joseph Nicolosi, is based here in LA, and I wanted to meet one of his patients who had managed to reverse his sexuality. I was home one weekend and I said, I am, but I don't want to be homosexual. Yeah. And how, how did you respond to that, Karen? My heart broke because I knew his life would be more difficult than yeah. I would want for my child. Yes. I begged God to make me straight. I would serve him for the rest of my life if he, if he took these homosexual attractions away from me and it never did anything. So I felt as though I'd been a good Christian and I'd been faithful and that it hadn't worked. So I needed to try something different and that was reparative therapy. I eventually came upon Dr. Nicolosi's book in my university library right. and basically sat down and read the whole thing in one sitting. Yeah. I hadn't heard of Nicolosi. I knew nothing about reparative therapy. Right. But I had such respect for Daniel and who he was that yeah. that's what he needed to do. Right. I would support him. Presumably he's trying to prepare you for a moment when you're walking along the street and there's a guy and he gives you a set of tools to apparently to deal with that. Yes. You would ask yourself, well, what characteristic of that guy do I find most attractive? Right. And you take those characteristics and say, well, what internal faults in myself do those represent? What you are seeing is a mirror of the things you lack. Yes. And for how long did you see him? How many sessions? How many? Was it every couple of years? Or? From start to finish, it was about a year and a half. Are you now in a state where you are actually happy with who you are? Yes. Since then, I've been satisfied with my sexuality. Well, I'm off to see Dr. Joseph Nicolosi, who is the uh, director, I believe, of the St. Thomas Aquinas Clinic and one of the founding members of NARF, which is the um, National Association for Research and Therapy for Homosexuality. He uses the rather confusing phrase, gay people can come out of their homosexuality. They can come out of their coming out. Um, and naturally, I'm not disposed to favor him, but I'm gonna let him say what he has to say and listen to it, and I'm not here to have a fight. It's really just to see whether he really thinks there is something scientific uh, underlying his work. Hello. Uh, hi, I'm Stephen Fry from the BBC. I'm here to see Dr. Nicolosi. Thank you very much. Hi. Hello, hi, Dr. Nicolosi. Hello, Hello Stephen Fry. Nice to meet you. Come nice on in. Nice Thank to you meet very you. much. Come on in. What a gorgeous view you have. Thank it's you. It's almost unbelievable. You. you could sit on the right, right here. Super. Okay, here we are. Well, it's nice to be here. Um, good, good to have you here. Uh, you, you, you offer a practice which heals, reverses. Um, I don't know how. I'd just like, not, like to know the vocabulary you prefer yes. to describe the work you Resolves. do. Resolves. Resolves. We resolve the conflicts that are behind the homosexual attractions. Right. That's what we do. You're pretty much of the opinion, I assume, therefore, that homosexual, homosexuality is, is a, a nurture. That's right. Um, right. We believe it's based on trauma. 
you're really going to have to look yeah. hard to find a trauma. It's an accusation of some sort of parental going wrong. Which... That's what we believe. We believe wow. it's about the parents. The boy does not disidentify with the mother and does not bond with the father. We don't believe he was born gay. If tomorrow a gay gene is discovered, you're going to feel a bit silly, aren't you? No, I won't feel you silly won't. at all, because you, they will still have to explain all the homosexuals that were successfully treated. Would you say that you have a, a kind of percentage that you can demonstrate of yeah, success-failure rate? We say a third, a third, a third. A third no change, a third significant improvement, a third cure. Is there an age at which... Well, we're getting more and more teenagers, more yeah. and more adolescents. I would say about maybe 60% of our clients now are teenagers. Parents call up in a panic because they found out their son is looking at gay porn. and of course, we have to get him into therapy. The, the momentum and the enthusiasm of the gay movement sometimes sweeps up young adolescents into that identity right. when it's premature. Imagine I'm coming to see you, Joe, to, to explore the possibility that I might find my inner straight person, if there is such a, per, a, sure. a being. Sure. Uh, how, how would you begin? What, what is the therapeutic process? Many of these clients are able to trace their, their traumatic origins back to the father. My father never cared about me. My father never loved me. He never seemed interested in me. I was trying to get the three A's, attention, affection, approval. Right. And those emotional needs became sexualized. The thing that puzzles me, because I, yeah. because I can't picture it in myself, okay. is when you close your eyes and masturbate, what images come into your head? Are you saying you can actually reprogram that? Because yes. that is you know, yes. basically what gives you an erection, what excites yes, you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly that's, the goal of reparative therapy. Yeah. We, we will say to them, for example, have you right. ever had a heterosexual attraction? Yes. Well, when I was 13 years old, there was this little girl at school. Can you feel a little something? Well, good. Triangle of containment. Hold a picture of that girl. Stay with your body. Stay connected to me. Stay with it. I did a telephone session with a... 17-year-old boy, he says, I now look at gay porn, I cannot get aroused. Right. And I jokingly, I cannot get aroused. Right, right. Right, right. what? That means the right. therapy is working. It's clearly, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I'm also interested in, in the phenomenon that has become known in the last 20 years or so as metrosexual. And without it being the least bit of offensive, I would say you fit that rather well. You're very well groomed, you look, I mean, you could easily pass as a gay man, <laughs> I can say. For all his talk of success, Nicolosi is unable to find one of his ex-gays to talk to us. Dan Gonzalez is actually not one of his success stories, and these days is a confirmed ex-ex-gay. He and his mother, Carol, now campaign against the dangers of reparative therapy. You take the people that are on the posters for ex-gay programs, and not even they will tell you that they're 100% straight. They give you these bizarre, convoluted answers about how they're Attract, how they love women, how they love their wife, but they're not physically attracted to a woman walking down the street. And you get these bizarre answers. That's not heterosexuality. Mm. And not to mention damaging. Because every time you feel attracted to someone, that's supposedly a reminder of how you're broken. And what it doesn't cover, for me and for most gay people I know, ultimately, being, being gay like any other part of being human is about love. Was that ever addressed, the nature of love, or was it always just about sexual attraction and how you get rid of that? It was always just about sexual attraction and how you get rid of that. And I came to the point where I realized there was nothing wrong with it yeah. and that I didn't need to change and that I couldn't change. Did that mean also that you had to abandon your faith? I had to abandon my faith. Right. Can I ask, on personal matters, have you had a partner, or do you have a partner, and are you happy? I'm single at the moment, but I have dated and had boyfriends, yes. Yeah. Nice boys, you like them? Oh, yes. <laughs> Daniel good. has good taste. Yeah, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. What is your feeling, all, all told, would, would, would you say, Carol, about, about Dr. Nicolosi and his program? I think he should be ashamed of himself. Right, right. I, I, I can see you are. You are angry about, mm -hmm. about it, yeah. Reparative therapy makes the assumption that being gay is a problem for which families are somehow to blame. But for me, this is an argument that just doesn't add up. I have two parents whom I completely adore. Um, my mother is the warmest, loveliest, kindest person in the world. My father is equally wonderful, though I will confess he was, I felt, very cold towards me and to my brother, incidentally, when we were young. And I was scared of him. 
So in that sense, yeah, he's on the money. <laughs> I had that kind of father, but so did my brother. You know, I mean, it's just not good enough. And, and I don't think it really matters. I think the point is that if there is a problem, it's with society. Because that is the reason so gay people are afraid to come out. It's the reason uh, the reparative therapy can exist. It's because there is a culture or there is a worldview or there is a religious doctrine out there which, uh, which speaks in a strong voice to condemn. And young people are very vulnerable. And I, I have no sympathy with gay people who tell a 14-year-old they are gay and they must accept it. But I have no sympathy with a with one who tells a 14-year-old that they're not gay and they must accept it. It's bad enough being adolescent most of the time than to, than, than to have interested parties from either group trying to recruit you. I couldn't leave Hollywood without some exploration of how the movie capital of the world deals with homosexuality. We've all heard the rumors about A-list stars hiding in the closet, but would actors really feel the need to do that nowadays? There's always a big question in people's minds. Is if you're a male gay actor and you come out, does it, does it reduce the number of parts you can play? Does it mean you can only suddenly play the camp best friend or some sort of villain? Can you play a romantic lead? Can you, can you have a full career? Is it fair to ask gay actors to have to come out? Do they, are they hypocrites for hiding their sexuality? I don't know. I'd be anxious to find out. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. I think she's got it. Maybe hiding your sexuality is warranted in Hollywood because the audience wants to believe that the romantic lead or action hero is the real straight deal. Now once again, where does it rain? On the plane, on the I'm on my way to meet a man who helps actors hide the telltale signs of a gay sexuality. Hello. Hello. How are you? But I'm most curious to know about the psychological impact of a life spent peeking out of the closet. Well, now, one of the things I know you do, which is, um, which is fascinating, is that you help actors who feel that their voices are, as it were, perhaps a little too camp, and they feel that's holding them back in terms of the amount of work they can get. Well, you know, sometimes they come on their own. Sometimes it's a producer, yeah. agents, yeah. managers. We're not getting the jobs that we think we should get. Right. It's just like teaching an accent. It doesn't really change who you are. No. If everybody thinks that you're Southern, that means you did a good job. It doesn't mean you're Southern. Today, Bob is seeing a new client called David Ross, a former member of British boy band Bad Boys, Inc., who's now trying to carve a career in Hollywood. Tell me what you'd like me to help you with. Um, I think the main thing that I have going on is that I, um, I'm constantly self-monitoring. Uh, and I really thought that it was to do with um, my career and being in a band. I used to be in a boy band and was told that, you know, I couldn't act a certain way or talk a certain way. What did they say you can't do what? Oh, God, I couldn't walk down certain streets. I couldn't flick my hair a certain way. I couldn't, um, obviously couldn't talk about certain things. So tell me what you'd like me to help you with? Um, just being so self-conscious. I mean, there's, obviously there's an element of self-consciousness to being an actor and being a performer, but, you know, if I cross my legs, is that too English or is that gay? I mean, I don't know, you know, I can cross my legs like this or should I cross my legs like this? I just, well, what I, do you I, think? I think it should be like this. Or I should just at least for, sit like this. For, for why, <laughs> why would it be better that way? Just so you seem more straight, which seems ridiculous. Well, you don't seem particularly effeminate. I don't see a big physical problem. I mean, I know it's easier to say than to do, <laughs> but I think you need to come to peace. Yeah, you, you, so you're a member of a boy band, you were managed by someone who obviously didn't want you to come out. Didn't right. want the, you had girl fans and, and, and you were a huge success. And I think it's the residue of that that you've still got with your acting, isn't it? Yeah, oh, that? absolutely. It's what comes with being in, in, the, in the public eye and being in the closet. You just felt fake all the time. It's fascinating and I feel, well, I feel very honoured that you've come and been on camera talking about this to us because that's in what kind of way is coming out. Yeah. <laughs> so you There's no going back in. Well, good. Well, then, then, then yeah. go for it. Yeah. Right. Go for it because, listen, there's, there are gay actors 
all over town right. that are working. While Bob's probably right, I think many of these actors are still choosing to live in the closet. But there is an actor in this town whose coming out could be a sign that things are changing in Hollywood. Neil Patrick Harris now lives an openly gay life with his partner and their surrogate twins. Yet in How I Met Your Mother, he continues to play perhaps the straightest and most prolific womanizer on American television. Well, Neil, people of my generation remember, his, uh, remember you very well as a child actor. You played Doogie Howser, MD, this, this prodigy, which in, in fact you kind of were a prodigy because, you know, you sing, you dance, you act. Had you thought through the idea when you did come out that it might affect your career adversely and that maybe you might not have the full range of roles available for you? That, that it, it, would be, it would be idiotic of me to say that that hadn't crossed my mind or yeah. was a concern. You know, if you're on a TV show, uh, or an action hero in a movie, you know, people with m billions of dollars are hoping that it catches on in a way that makes them billions of more dollars. Exactly. And so they're cautious, and I, I get that. So, yes, if you're super campy and fay and a fet and want to play the football quarterback, it's not gonna happen. You could, I could see you getting upset that <laughs> you're not getting cast in those parts, and it's probably because you're gay. So you, as it were, got away with it being almost um, a yawn from the public rather than a kind of shock, which, which must have been a relief, I should imagine. Very much so. I was, uh, I was anticipating um, outrage, and in turn, I got indifference. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second, didn't you hear? <laughs> so I suppose... Um, all eyes are on you in a way um, because of the fact that you you seem to be breaking this um, uh, image people have that gay gay actors can't play straight. So you've not only done it once, but you've got more films coming out in which you're doing it again. So, you know, are you, are you conscious of this? Do you think you might be changing the world? At the end of the day, the things that I've currently been in and are about to come out make a lot of money, then all of a sudden it'll look like I'm this gay yeah. actor that can play straight roles and I'm suddenly the like yeah. that guy but if one of the movies flops then all of a sudden it looks like oh see yeah I like to give people more credit than to think that they're just gonna watch me and think about sodomy <laughs> <laughs> so, I hope I can hope. amuse people more than that <laughs> <Let's hope. laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I'm not in control of those kind of things <laughs> Neil's optimism about the movie going public is encouraging, and I guess, with his films due for release in the coming year, we'll soon learn if the world's ready for an openly gay actor in the role of a straight leading man. How we react to the films may also tell us something of how society as a whole sees its gay community. For all its faults, Hollywood is a pretty accurate reflection of the way most of the world is looking. And the fact that they can have actors who are openly gay, openly camply gay, is not something you should thank or congratulate Hollywood for. You thank and congratulate the culture that Hollywood recognizes, accepts things like that. Hollywood is the, is the thermometer that is thrust up the anus of the world's sensibility. Things do move forward. It's three steps forward, two steps back, but in the end, it is always progress. People, people learn. I want to be a man, man cub, and stroll right into town and be just like Next the time, men. I'm in Brazil at the biggest gay celebration in the world. I travel to India where they're celebrating the end of British colonial laws which criminalized gays. And I'm in Russia, where life for gay people is taking a turn for the worst. Look at Putin, look at Dobby the house elf, and remember that's all he is, the little house elf.